I want to show you a trick and a useful function we'll use in several places of our game engine here. We have the magnitude function. Looking closely at it, we use the Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully that's nothing new. And we use the square root function. Square root is actually a very expensive function to call. We tend to avoid those as much as possible. However, I'm kind of doing some premature optimization here saying, well, square root is bad. Don't call it ever, ever. That's, that's a bad attitude to have. Okay, but I do want you to know square root's kind of expensive. Last time I checked, I saw some stats. I couldn't quote these, so I'm kind of shooting these off the hip. But square root function was about 27 times longer than adding some numbers together. So if you think, well, I just want to add two numbers. That's, that's one, a unit of time of one, and then square root would take 27 times longer than that. <sighs> Ideally, we avoid this square root. But more importantly, we're, we're going to make a function that we can use in other places, not just for optimization, but to actually uh, get some work done. Let me show you where I'm headed with this. If I call this magnitude function, and let's say I call it on some vector a, then that gives me the magnitude of the vector a. If I eliminate the square root call, then what that will do is give me the magnitude of vector a squared. One of the most common places to use this is to find out which vector is longer than another. I don't necessarily care about the length of this vector, nor do I care about the length of this vector, but I do want to know which one's longer. And so if I call magnitude squared, let's say this is vector a, okay, and I say, well, I have a is magnitude squared, and this is vector b, like so. Well, if I have b's magnitude squared, b's magnitude squared is not going to be as long as a's magnitude squared. Hopefully that's pretty straightforward here. The longer vector will have a greater magnitude squared. And so that's that's one reason why we want a magnitude squared. We can compare two vectors, find out which one's longer than the other, and we don't have to call that nasty square root. So yeah, you could say this is on the the verge of premature optimization. Well, how can we get the magnitude of a vector Square. Well, I, I just showed you I can eliminate the square root. Well, that leaves us with x times x plus y times y plus z times z. And yes, multiplication takes a little bit longer than addition, but not nearly as long as square root and that kind of thing. We still have to work out this math. But if I look at this math here, it looks a lot like this math right there. You see that? x times x, y times y, z times z. In this case, this function, let me scroll up here. This is our dot function, our dot product. This should look familiar. And we wrote it to handle multiplying or dotting two different vectors together, but that doesn't mean we couldn't dot the same vector with itself. If, if I take the vector a and I dot it with itself, the vector a, then that will give me the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a times the cosine of the angle between A and A. Well, here's A, and here's the second A. There's the, the exact same vector. And if you remember your cosine, well, the, the theta here, there's no theta. The, the angle between these two vectors is zero. There's no theta in there. Well, the cosine of zero, this is the value zero there, is equal to one. So then I could come in here and erase this replace it with a 1. Well, that's the same as multiplying everything with 1. Well, there's no point in writing that 1. I can just eliminate it. And then all of a sudden, look at this. A vector dotted with, it, dotted with itself will give you the magnitude of that vector times the magnitude of that vector. Or rewritten, it will give me the magnitude of that vector squared which is exactly the type of function we're trying to write here. Magnitude squared instead of just magnitude. So I could actually come in here and remember we have unit tests on this. Let me control F5 and build this just to make sure everything's building. The unit tests are all still green. Lots of green. That's good. Instead of saying x times x, y times y, z times z, I could say this dot with this. Okay, dot the vector with itself. Let's build this, run this, make sure all of our tests are still green. That's a nice thing about unit testing. It kind of backs up the compiler and tells us, hey, you, you, you just caused a problem. But right here, we don't have any problem. Our results are still green. If we did cause a problem, then our mindset would be, okay, well, now I know what to fix 
Whereas if I didn't have my unit tests, and I did cause a problem, and all of a sudden that problem raised its head a month later, I would be completely out of context. Maybe even an hour or two later, I would be completely out of context and have to come back and debug my code. So that's nice having those unit tests back us up, and I can say this dot with this. Generally, I won't say this and then call a function on it. I think this is syntactically verbose, but if you remember, I wrote this dot function to be syntactically placed between the left operand and the right operand, similar to if I was just going to multiply the two vectors. Some people will actually overload this operator to do the dot product, but I think that's a little obscure, so I, I in this case, this is probably the, one of the few cases I will say this arrow do something. You know, instead, I could I could just take all this off and it would build and run just fine because the this arrow is implied. You see we got all of our green and we're good, but I think syntactically I'll just leave that in there. But the whole thing I'm trying to go for here is a magnitude squared function. So in true form to everything else we do, let's write our unit test. Uh, make sure they fell and then we shall pass them. Let's go to vector 3D tests and hopefully we stick the result next to the other magnitude test. So we'll say test vector 3D magnitude squared and then down here uh, I think we'll just reuse what we have up here as much as possible. Vector 3D, our vector and actually, do I want to make a separate test? I'm tempted to combine these tests into a single test, but I actually kind of like the granularity. Hey, your magnitude squared failed, or your magnitude squared. It gives me a little more granularity to know what failed if one of these happens to fail. So I'm going to go for granularity here. Vector 3D, or I guess I could just copy and paste this. I get hesitant, though. You've seen what happens when I copy and paste stuff. I tend to screw it up. Uh, our vector, I'll say float magnitude squared gets our vector dot magnitude squared. We haven't even stubbed the function out, so this won't compile, but I'm going to say expect float equal magnitude squared. Oh, what is it? 3 times 3 plus 4 times 4 plus 5 times 5. The magnitude of that squared, well unsquared it's this value, but uh, squared it will be 50.0 float. Let's also do another one, uh, vector 3D, our vector 2, I'll call this one vector 1, vector 1, and in here I'm just going to say 4, we'll do, I don't know, let's do a 6 and a 0 there. So notice I only have direction on one of the axis here, the y axis if you would. And so this one should actually be pretty straightforward to figure out. Expect float equal our vector two dot magnitude squared. That should be equal to thirty six. Okay, the length of this is six. Then squared should be thirty six. Let me put the suffix on there for float. And I think just to be consistent up here, I can't remember why we did this. Maybe for readabilities, per, we could just take this and move it in here. But I think, yeah, for readability, I made a separate variable. Whereas here, I don't have that big long float. I probably could take some numbers off this and the expect float equal would still pass. But I think just to keep it simple down here, I'm going to uh, eliminate that temporary variable there and same thing right here. Let's build this, run this. We should see some failing tests. Search and result, no appropriate default. Oh, we're seeing ma macros. That's actually a macro error. That might confuse a little bit. No appropriate default constructor available. This macro here generated some code and I realized, hey, we do not have a magnitude squared function stubbed out. I forgot to do that. So I hit F12 there. What I did is I clicked on the magnitude function here. Hit F12. That navigates us to the magnitude function. And then down here I'm going to say float vector 3D magnitude squared. It's going to be const as well. And we'll just return zero, hoping our test should fail. I'm not sure where the extra curly came from. And go to the header file, find magnitude here. And just below it, say inline float magnitude squared. Const stub it out. Now it should build. 
Build started. Build succeeded. We get some red. I'm liking the red. The red's ugly. That tells me that, yeah, our unit tests are, are testing stuff and it's failing. So now all, all that's left is is implementing this. So I'm, I'm going to take this code, control X, put it right here, and then the square root, we'll just take the square root of the magnitude squared. Like so. So when we call magnitude, we'll say take the square root, add the square root on top of the magnitude squared. And magnitude squared, easy. It's just this dotted with itself. I noticed, though, uh, I probably didn't talk. This, this is pointer stuff. I hope you're used to the, this, the C++ this pointer. I actually have a pretty good video on C++ this pointer and dereferencing pointers and arrows on pointers. Go watch those videos if you need to understand what this syntax does. Let's control a 5. Be sure we build, run, get some green. Feeling very green. Good time to commit. We have a magnitude squared. We did some refactoring and we can move on to our next topic.